Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Eric Zhang. Uh, today is so honored, so I can uh, share you guys some topic regarding the choice of an entity uh, to small to mid-sized business, SMB. Uh, I know today's uh, our theme is uh, help the minorities get a government contract. Uh, we try to uh, uh, celebrate and recognize uh, this Asian American uh, Pacific uh, Islander Heri Heritage Month API. So I'm so glad that, you know, I'll be part of it, can contribute uh, some of my uh, expertise or so, uh, my knowledge, you know, in uh, some uh, area so we can help the minorities to get some government contract. Um, so this might be my background. Uh, before the, uh, you know, the, all the uh, presentation. So we always have the disclaimer. So everything we uh, talk about today is for the general education purpose for the general public. So you cannot use my uh, information in this uh, uh, PPT to uh, for your tax return preparation or tax planning or the negotiation. Uh, you know, uh, through the RS uh, uh, when you have get a tax audit, we always recommend you guys uh, to find your tax advisor or CPAs when you have a particular. Uh, tax issues, All right? Okay, uh, I have a full uh, part of the section uh, for this uh, presentation. Uh, first, because I want to touch base with uh, today's topic. Uh, so how to uh, grab the uh, government contract. So my experience for the government contract, uh, so back to over uh, 18, 19 years ago, uh, when I'm still uh, in Bay Area, as a staff uh, uh, auditor in a local SAP firm. So I try to uh, help my uh, uh, local firm to get some uh, government uh, audit project. So I will be uh, try to be uh, uh, talk about a little bit of my own uh, experience for how to uh, uh, obtain a government contract a little bit. So the next three part section is all related to a uh, choice of entity. So when I studied in the Golden Gate University at the master, uh, uh, master tax Asian program, uh, so the choice of entity is a is a is a like a big bunk of the book. So we studied the whole uh, semester, and uh, after that, uh, many classmates still cannot really uh, understand. You know what's the best choice uh, when you start form an entity. Uh, so, but uh, today I will be uh, also. Give you guys a little bit of uh, direction or maybe fitting. Uh, so which way, which type is maybe better fit uh, your situation. So let's start for the uh, first uh, part. Um, so the small business, small business definition in SBA, uh, Carlos this morning, uh, I think I described very uh, in, uh, in detail orientated, but I just want to uh, repeat a bit more. Uh, see, the small business, the definition is not you really what you think, you know, five people, 10 people, 20 people consider small business, that's for sure. So what about the over 100 people? What about the over 1,000 employees? So your, your revenue below a million dollars is all oh, this small business. So what about your revenue three million or five million? So even more than seven million. So, um, when you really look into the definition, you see uh, the small business definition is not what you really think about is small. So you need to uh, take a look at uh, SBA, the table of small business size standards. So you always can go to the SBA website to take a look. Is your business considered the small business? So I use this for example, one third of all retail trade, sub industries, the size standard, if they do a testing, your average revenue, okay, receipt, it's uh, below 7.5 million, is considered a small business. Other retail, this such industries, if they are counted by number of employees, that can be a uh, hundred to 500. So that's mean usually for retail side of the industry. So the number of employee cannot exceed 500 consider small business for SBA purpose. But if uh, we come to the information industry, like uh, a lot of uh, you know, Silicon Valley, uh, Northern Cal, uh, then 
USC, some uh, startup. Uh, but uh, I think uh, Carlos already mentioned about usually if you want to get a SB loans, you know, you must be in business in two years. It's a uh, kind of uh, uh, exceptional. Uh, not many occasions if a startup uh, business can get uh, like a SBA, uh, some kind of a loan. If you haven't been, uh, uh, you know, in a business for more than two years. Uh, but uh, like in information industry, you can see the employee number can be ranged from uh, 500 to uh, 1500. Yeah, depend on you know the sub uh, inform, uh, information industry uh, code or category. Okay, the so maximum annual average receipt for information industry can range be some 0.5 million, can up to 38.5 million. So it's close to 40 million already. This consider it's a it's a large corporation already. Uh, but you know what? It can still be defined as small business. Okay, um, so the small business. Beside the number of employee and your average, your gross revenue, you also need to consider your legal uh, structure. So who own the business? Is foreigner own the business? Then maybe you cannot get the SB government you know, contract or loan. Uh, then where you operate, you mainly operate. You mainly you know, operate in the US basis or you your main operation in the overseas. So such factors can be uh, an issue, you know, when you try to get a loan. Uh, especially, uh, you guys all know, for the past two years, the, the PPP, uh, Payroll Protection uh, Program, uh, then that's the big support for uh, small or uh, middle-sized business uh, when they survive those COVID-19 situations. And a lot, a lot of EIDL loan, uh, see the restaurant business, they consider like a RF, Retro Revitalization Fund. So when we talk about the RF, you know, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. So you guys maybe, maybe remember that's about 28.5 billion funding at the very beginning. So the fund uh, that's requirement is uh, for the 21 days, they only open to small business and also minority owned with uh, what? With uh, socially disadvantaged and uh, economically disadvantaged group. So that's why it's very important. First, you need to define your business is a small business. Secondly, it's a minority owned. Thirdly, so it might be socially disadvantaged and economically disadvantaged group. So you need to definitely talk to your um, financial advisor, tax advisor, CTAs, uh, you know, when you're looking into the, grab the government contract. So back to 18, 19 years old. So when I submit, you know, one of the city's audit proposal, so we consider our firm is a minority owned and also women owned. So Carlos this morning also touched base, I mentioned about if women owned, you must be owned. The, the main person might be owned uh, 50%. Uh, that's considered women owned. Yeah, but also minority owned. So uh, in this case, uh, you must be a small business, as I mentioned about, it's a minority owned business. And also you get some uh, social and economic disadvantage. So then you might be have a more compatible when you grab the government uh, contract. Okay, so this section, I just want to be a echo to this same. So give you a little bit of, uh, you know, information. Uh, regarding uh, what's the requirement uh, when you try to grab a government contract. But uh, in contrast, so for the RS, when we define small versus large corporation. So I think the new update uh, for the RS uh, before it's 10 million and more is considered large corporation. Right now, it's uh, all the past three years, the gross revenue less than 26 million, they consider it a small uh, business. That's for the RS purpose. So when you get an audit, uh, you probably do not notice. So the audit department came from a small and self-employed department or from the large or international uh, group from the RS to get a, you know, a, a, a co corporation a federal audit. Uh, so just uh, let you guys know. So that's the different definition for small and large uh, based on federal level, state level, uh, even different uh, department, like the Department of uh, 
uh, uh, transportation, DOT, and maybe they have the, the, also they have their definition for small business and the RS have their own. And uh, also the same thing for the franchise test board in state in California. Okay, so let's come to my uh, traditional section uh, regarding the, you know, the corporation structure. Uh, first, when you set up a corporation, so the first question you want to ask yourself, who owns the business? Yourself or you have partners? Your partner is a corporation or trust or another foreign person. So that's can make a, the entity choice is a little bit different. So secondly, you want to talk to yourself, where to operate the business. So now today we only cover in California. So we do not talk about the much about the multi-state uh, incorporation tax issue. So we leave it as uh, which county you want to set. In San Francisco County, Santa Clara County, LA County, San Mateo County, uh, San Bernardino County or Orange County. So different county and different city you incorporate. You need to consider the business license fee. So if you, like uh, I located in the Southern California, so my office in, uh, I have a uh, three office in uh, Southern California, like uh, Pasadena, Orange County, City of Industry. I have an office in Mayor Peters in the East, East Bay in the San Francisco area, and also have an office in uh, like uh, Houston and the Seattle area. But when we talk about the in, in within California, so if my office in the city of industry, so I won't need to pay any business license fee. If I move my office just the one, one, one street uh, on the west, west side of the street, that might be in the West Covina cities. You, you, you know, you can, maybe your business license fee can be a thousand dollars, a couple of thousand dollars. Uh, not that much money, but uh, you know, when you do some uh, uh, carefully kind of uh, uh, investigation, uh, like a startup, uh, those kind of, uh, you want to think about, hey, which city I need to sub my uh, uh, office? And do I need to sub my office, you know, in my car garage? Yeah, you can, you know, you do not need to, must be have an office. But maybe your city will become to you send your letter, say, hey, you know, you use your own home as your business. Did you file a business, you know, uh, like a permit? So, you know, that's make, make sure you can allow it uh, to uh, uh, in, incorporate and use your home address as your business address. So same thing, uh, the county tax. Uh, you always think about, you know, uh, that's a, uh, uh, there's a regulation for the cities and uh, for the counties uh, because we didn't talk about state right now because we're only focused on California. So where to operate business is also very important. That also can be how the impact for where, you know, or what type of the business suppose you should uh, incorporate. Okay, third, so we, that's why, you know, we come to today's our uh, main topic, which entity type fits a business? So that's different uh, type of uh, business. What, you know, how many? So what they are. So those type of entity, we can consider if you can be the super partnership as a self-employed schedule C business. If you like to be a realtor, uh, insurance uh, agent, professional, so you can be a handy person. Uh, you can be just uh, uh, turn to your hobby, to a small business online, like a retail. So you can start from a small as a super partnership. That's self-employee. So two super partnership, two individuals. Uh, we, we super partnership, we call in Chinese called Ge Ti Hu. Yeah, uh, sorry, you know, today, uh, I think before we prepare the bilingual translation, uh, both in English and uh, also my uh, uh, senior Manager uh, Mark Zhong uh, CPA will be translated in Chinese. I'm not sure. So uh, if that's uh, the Chinese translation channel is still on. So if not, so you can always you know come to our office. So we can both can uh, have uh, our uh, uh, partners and CPAs. Uh, you know in house can speak uh, either Mandarin, Cantonese, uh, Korean, uh, definitely English. Yeah. Uh, 
so, but uh, today I'm, uh, I think I just, uh, uh, the, the organizer just uh, mentioned about this so we can focus just using English. Uh, so if you do not uh, really understand this part in, uh, in, 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 in English, just, just uh, you know, let us know. I will be uh, sending a uh, Chinese version to you cheat with us. Okay, so two super partners, uh, two super, uh, so self-employed person, they form, they can form a, either general partner or limited partner. So the partner must be have two member. So then third, okay, so the first super partnership and the partnership, okay, I will be tell you the difference. Uh, uh, this is uh, considered is a uh, pretty much all limited liability. It's all you export your personal asset to the business you know you involved. Then we come we come to the limited liability. That's three type. It's one is LLC. A lot of people they might be know uh, this is used you know it's popular for a lot of small corporation or uh, especially attorney always try to use this uh, limited liability company as the uh, corporation's uh, entity type. We use have a, a corporation at the very beginning. Uh, then we come to C corporation and S corporation. Uh, let's do one by one uh, comparison. So I'll give you guys some more details comparison here. Okay. So let's see. For the number of owners, I mentioned about the super partnership, only one. Yeah, eligible owner, only one. General partner. So minimally two is all general partners. So eligible owners, there can be no limitation. Uh, the general partners can be, uh, the partner can be corporation, CS, all type of trust. So the partner not can be individual only, they can be a, a corporation too. Like a limited partner, limited partner, they have a GP and LP, they have a general partner. Okay, then they have a limited partner. LLC. LLC is depend on the tax status. Actually, LLC is a hybrid. It's a, they can be, you know, the LLC can be super partnership. LLC can be a partnership. LLC can be a C corporation. LLC also can be S corporation. So the LLC have the different faces if you uh, treat them differently. So when you start with a corporation, you think that's so simple. I just find uh, you know, uh, just the article of incorporation, and maybe I, start, I find online, maybe, you know, cost you $150, 200 bucks, so I can do it by myself, just LLC. But if you do not know the difference, okay, if you don't know the difference later on, that can be trigger your uh, big tax burdens or tax liabilities. When you make money, uh, when you the father return, if you not sure what type of uh, uh, you know form you need to file under the LLC, actually LLC is uh, the most I think is complicated. Uh, the the entity type, uh, you know, you guys need to be very careful when you try to form a company under LLC. Uh, so under LLC is a limited liability. That can be one person. Okay, one person is a is a one member. Okay, incorporate LLC by default is super partnership. That means there's no corporation form need to file. Only file needs to file Schedule C for the federal level and the 568 single member LLC form attached with your state California tax return. Okay, if two members LLC. So you can think about you want to file at the partnership 1065 for the you know federal level, or you can file the form 8832. You can do some uh, entity reclassification, reclassify the LLC to C corporation or S corporation, file as 1120 or 1120S. So this is a point of tricky. So um, make sure uh, when you guys form a corporation, uh, you need to. Uh, definitely understand this part, or at least you get your tax professional, tax advisor to help you. Uh, then let's talk C corporation. C corporation, no matter it's one person, two person, maybe hundred person, a thousand shareholders. Okay. 
doesn't matter. So you can form a C corporation, S corporation. So I, I know for tax effective purpose for large small business, S corporation might be one of the most efficient, you know, type of entity. You know, a lot of uh, uh, business owners choose. Uh, but they have some limitation. So the shareholder must limit to less than 100 shareholders. And uh, there might be no foreigners in this S corporation. Uh, you can see uh, partners, corporations, yet cannot be the S corporation shareholders. So there's uh, some limitation for the S corporation election. Yeah. So let's go to the next page. Uh, for for the e easy of formation, ownership liability and transfer and the deposition of the business interest, uh, we can see super partnership is very easy to set up. So you only need to uh, file a fictitious statement to the county you are doing business. So then publish uh, your name in the local newspaper for a month, you know, uh, once. Uh, in, a, in a week for four weeks. So nobody just, uh, uh, you know, have the dispute with you. So you can just go ahead with the name. We call the DBA, it's a doing business as, it's a fictitious name. So then you can go ahead, uh, run your business. But uh, as I mentioned about it's unlimited liability, you report this uh, self-employed business in your Schedule C. Um, so for the general partner, it's a similar like a super partnership, just, just a two person, they, uh, they partner together. So leave the partner, we can see general partner is similar like a super partnership. LP, just risk only limited to how much capital they contribute to this partnership, okay? So LLC and the C corporation, S corporation, they all is a limited liability company. So that's mean the risk are limited to the investment. Okay, uh, they must be filed the article in cooperation with the state of in California, uh, both JP and LP, it's the same thing. Yeah, um, talk about the transfer that de de position of the uh, de uh, disposition of the bins and interest that, that can involve a lot of complex, complex, complex issues. So I just uh, uh, do not want to talk that too, too many, too much. Okay, so now we talk about the tax each entity they need to uh, uh, relate it to each entity, like a super partnership. So we know when you get a 1099, so you, you report your in schedule C. So part of you need to report income tax. Okay. Then another part, you need to import the self-employee tax, the, the whatever we talk call about the 15.3%, social security, Medicare, FACA tax. And the general partnership, GP, same thing, income tax plus self-employed tax. Leaving the partner, for GP, they need to, there's net income subject to income tax and the self-employed tax. But LP, it's passive income, so only subject to income tax. It's very important you guys understand the difference. Yeah, then that can be a, make you, a, a, you know, a try to, uh, range what type of uh, uh, business you want to form. You know, maybe you have a different thought. So corporation. Corporation is subject to like a corporation levels uh, tax rate. It's an income tax. No self-employed no self tax involved. Same thing. Uh, but uh, so as I mentioned later on, there'll be uh, two level of income tax involved for the C corporation. So one is a uh, uh, corporation level, one is a uh, uh, shareholder level, like an individual level. Uh, in, uh, then S corporation. S corporation is only you know, limited to the income tax, not self-employed tax. That's why uh, we, uh, you know, I just uh, talk about probably S corporation is uh, one of the most efficient tax uh, entity instruction. Uh, in structure for most of the small business uh, for, you know, for a reason. Yeah. Okay, so for the tax reporting, 
So all the entity be, besides LLC and the C corporation, they just pass through entity, PTE. So all the income eventually will be goes to, at the current year, will be the net income, uh, all everything will be uh, the, the, you know, for the super partnership, you report uh, everything in your personal tax return. Like a GP, LP, S corporation, you need to file the corporation return, but the net income loss will be passed through to your personal. Limited liability is depend on what type of the form you use. If you use a C corporation, then you have a 1120 corporation level tax return. You need to pay the corporation levels income tax. When you get dividend out, so it goes to your personal, then you get a dividend tax. So, uh, so you know, make it simple. The C corporation is a two double taxation. The rest of the entity can only be one layer of the tax. Okay, I will be definitely uh, talk about a little bit in detail. Okay, um, now we get a little bit of review about the tax rate. So before we can touch a little bit of uh, little bit examples or, or more details. Yeah, so in the California state level, the C corporation, is the, the income tax rate is 8.84%. S corporation only 1.5%. That's based on the net income. That means gross revenue minus cost goes so, minus all the expenses. So you have the net profit. So in California, you need to pay 8.84% for the C corporation. S corporation, I mentioned, there's no corporation level tax. So federal level, there's no tax. So the state, so you need to pay 1.5% based on your, your net income. Okay, let's come to the LLC. LLC always is have a unique character of features. Yeah, it, it's really, um, it's a uh, attorney is a love LLC because the protection, asset protection, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the capital is uh, better than C corporation and the S corporation, uh, even they all is a limited ability, but it's hard to uh, break into the shell uh, to the shareholder in personally. And so I will leave those uh, legal issues to the attorney. So I only want to talk about the tax part. So LLC, they pay 800 annual tax, but they also pay a LLC fee. But the LLC fee is not based on the net income. It's based on the corporation's gross income. So GP does no minimum income tax, uh, no minimum franchise tax. LP, they have $800 uh, minimum franchise tax. But uh, as uh, a lot of people know, the California now is uh, kind of uh, generous, you know, try to uh, uh, encourage and uh, help small business. So they have a two years uh, waiver for the minimum franchise tax, $800. Um, so this is uh, pretty good. It's really help uh, for those uh, uh, the starters. If they haven't made any profit yet, they won't need to pay the minimum franchise tax. Uh, especially in the first year. Okay. Mm. All right. So when I talk about the LLC fee, okay, uh, here I need to just uh, uh, clarify a little bit. So they have a two year uh, period. So uh, each year, so when you have a new start corporations, you know, you won't need to pay $800 only for the first year. Okay. Yeah. All right for the LLC fee. So we'll see if the business, they have a gross revenue less than $500,000 a year, but uh, over 250,000, besides $800, they need to pay extra $900. No matter the business is make a, a profit or have a, a loss. So that's doesn't matter. So for example, if you are in a wholesale trading business, if you set up a California LLC, your first year's sales, that's a lot, $6 million. But because, you know, uh, the, the, the duty fee and the inflation, 
you cannot uh, detect it, you know, your cost even over than your sales price. So you have a huge loss for the year. So you may maybe have a $2 million loss, okay? But because you form an LLC, uh, and uh, just uh, do like a partnership return. So that's make you uh, need to pay $11,790 besides the $800 minimum franchise tax. Yeah, you said, wow, you know, I have a $2 million loss this year. Why I need to pay $11,790 uh, LLC fee? That's because the LLC is based on your gross revenue. They do not based on how much money you made. So then you compare to the S corporation. The S corporation is 1.5% of your net profit. So you have a 2 million loss. You do not need to pay. But I said, oh, that's good. Then in this case, yeah, like you mentioned about, S corporation is better than LLC. But uh, you can have a different scenario. For example, you know, the kind in the real estate develop, developer development business. So last year it's a good business for those developers. So it, they have uh, 6 million sales, but that profit, okay, that profit is about uh, uh, $2 million. If you use the S corporation, the $2 million, so you time 1.5%. So you, when you see, hey, that's only $30,000. But if you, if the, if the corporation type, you use the LLC. So you only need to pay $11,790. Yeah, both need to add another $800 minimum tax on it. Yeah, so that's mean you use the LLC. Maybe can save you, uh, you know, eight, 18 grand. And it's not that much, but you know, if every year you save you that much, $18,000 is still a money. Uh, it uh, also can be a good dinner for your uh, employee or you can celebrate the, so some uh, birthday party uh, for, for your staff. Uh, so, I mean, when you consider what type of the business suppose you need to choose, yeah, you need to uh, definitely think over and over. Okay. When I talk about it's only California tax issue. So when you see this is a small amount, uh, but now we talk about, hey, so the federal tax rate, C corporation, not really bad. Starting the 2018, yeah, for the, uh, I know why this the past two years, the, the stock market is just going crazy. And I know recently this cooled down a bit, by the inflation, by the war, uh, by you know other other things, uh, COVID nineteen also uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, but it's uh, a lot of factors because they reduce the corporation tax rate by how much dramatically? Uh, so we talk about the twenty one percent, but compare before two thousand eighteen. So that's how C corporation looks like. So for the first $50,000 taxable income net, it's a 15%. So for some small business, they're crying. Why? Before, if they incorporate like a C corporation, their income is $50,000. They only need to pay 15%. But then nowadays, after 2017, small business for, if they use a C corporation, there's tax even, even increased 6%, not decreased. So then we, but this is really for large corporation. You can see, so the, the tax rate from a 15% easily jumped to a 25%, 34%, and a 39%, then decreased to 34, 35, then jumped to 38, then lock in at the 35%. That's the C corporation tax rate, uh, tax rate before 2018. So we use a 35%, you can see that's the 14% decrease after 2017. Before, my S corporation is a good choice, 
but after 2017, hmm, maybe C corporation is not a bad idea. Why? Because let's take a look. Let's take a look at our individual's tax rate. So most people you can know. Let's go to, to uh, uh, my company's website. So if you are being ever visit our company's website, you know, you go to the tax tours, go to the tax rate. Okay, so we click the 2022 tax rate. Okay, you can see your individual's federal tax rate from 10% come to 12%, come to the 22%, 24%, then jump to 32, 35, 37. That's mean your federal tax rate can be as high as 37% if you are individual filing and your taxable income over 539,900. If you are married filing jointly, so your income tax rate can be as high as 37% in the federal level when your income over 647,850 dollars. In here, you also can see that's a marriage penalty, right? <laughs> because once single, you know, two single, if they file the return, over 539,900, then subject to 37% tax rate, uh, tax rate. But if jointly, only $647,850, your taxable income subject to 37%. So that's another for the individuals tax planning. Uh, when you got, need to got married or you married in the file, file separate or jointly. So they also have a separate return, hello household re, uh, tax rate. But I want you guys get a little bit of sense. If you finding married jointly, so your income, all right? If uh, family income less than $340,000, Maybe it's good ideas. You still use a super partnership, partnership, as corporation, because the pass through income is subject to twenty four percent tax bracket. But your income over three forty thousand. So to the next level, if you keep the income in the C corporation, you will see the C corporation federal is only pay twenty one percent. But the individual levels, you need to pay 32% or even more, 35 or 37. But definitely, if you consider a section 199A, 20% deduction, consider, you know, you get a maybe 20% discount on that. But it's still, that's, hmm, it's a maybe 6 7% uh, more if you do the pass through entity. Okay, so uh, let's go back. Let's go back, okay? So I, today I cannot give you too much details. Um, so I only give you a little bit of just a heads up. You know, when you consider what type of the business entity you, you can choose, you want to choose. Yeah, that's a lot of issues you need to think about, okay? Now, uh, let me talk about uh, my third section. Um, so, that's tax issues considered. Actually, I covered a lot, you know, uh, through my uh, presentation so far. Um, so I already mentioned the, the self-employee. Uh, uh, so self-employed person need to put, pay the income tax and the self-employee, self-employment tax. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, you can do some retirement plan uh, during the self-employee part. Uh, but here, uh, one more thing I want to. Uh, I want to edit. Uh, so the, for the self-employed tax, um, so for a lot of people, if your salary income, W-2 income, all right, already over $147,000, you won't be really worried about the self-employed tax. Yeah, because the self-employed tax, the 6.2% times two is a 12.4% is limited to your salaries. Uh, up to 147,000, that's for the 2022, uh, but uh, not for the Medicare tax. So the 1.45% times 
two, like a two point nine percent. That's subject to a, a you know uh, need to pay, or even you need another zero point eight percent for the third Obama you know Medicare surcharge tax. You know here is a additional additional Medicare tax is uh, based on you know your income is over a certain level like uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for the married jointly. Um, 125,000 for uh, marriage funding separate. So those 1.45% times two, maybe add another 0.9% might be uh, still need to pay your net self-employee income need to also pay this extra, but maybe you can uh, do not worry about this 12.4%, uh, uh, which is uh, the 6.2% is supposed when you you get your paycheck, you know, portion, that's portion paid by yourself. Another 6.2% 6 6 pay your uh, employer, but uh, because you're self-employed, you, you pay double. Uh, but also, if your net profit income over 147,000, or you have another W-2, you add it together, you're over this $147,000, you won't need to pay this 12.4% uh, anymore. So, um, you also need to put this consideration. Sometimes, you know, when you have earned income, probably it's uh, better for you to uh, do some uh, pension retirement uh, planning, like uh, 401k, uh, simple hour account, DeFi benefit plan, for Taiwan plan. So can make you a shorter a chunk of the, uh, you know, taxable money into your pre-tax uh, tax deferral uh, pension account. Okay, partnership is similar. Okay, uh, just, uh, uh, okay, so I won't be talk, talk too much more, uh, but uh, those uh, basis allocation, uh, this year's 7203 form, uh, make a CPA tax professional a uh, uh, you know, when they have additional uh, filing requirement if uh, partners have uh, foreign uh, transactions of uh, interest. And LLC, uh, LLC, it, uh, uh, I mentioned about, you know, it's all depend on you, uh, what type of uh, entity you choose, single member LLC default by super partnership, uh, then two members can be partnership, corporation, C corp or S corp, it's, uh, it's all you need to uh, talk to a tax professional. Uh, C corporation, I mentioned about that you have double taxation issue. That's mean, you know, you pay 21% in the federal level, but you need to uh, think about, you know, when you one day, if you have a returning uh, dividend to your shareholders, the shareholders might be pay a dividend tax on it. So double taxation. Uh, you pay lower tax rate at the, right now because your personal individual tax return at the highest at the 37%. So it can make you uh, uh, save some tax bucks. Uh, for some capital uh, reserve in your, in your business. But later on, that might be can be an issue uh, for the uh, double taxation, you know, for the uh, dividend. But C Corporation, um, for me, I think uh, maybe consider S Corporation right now. It's uh, one of the most tax efficient vehicle uh, you might be choose. If you choose wisely, uh, that can be really better off uh, to other uh, entities, but you know what? It's again, it's on depend on what type of business you know you guys are uh, running. Okay, S corporation, yeah, S corporation. The good part is uh, the net income pass through from the S corporation, not subject to self employee tax for small business. So that can be saved the fifteen point three percent self employee tax. Okay, so. Uh, Okay, now I have uh, uh, some uh, examples that might be uh, give you guys to take a look. Okay, I um, think uh, my time is kind of uh, running out. Uh, all right, so let's talk about the self employed tax issue. Uh, so, the like super partnership have a W 2 income, small, uh, this single member LC, 200,000 W 2 income. The S corporation, if they have a two hundred fifty thousand dollars, if I assume this is a, a married jointly return, um, so uh, 
we, you know, they all below the 147,000 maybe threshold for self-employed tax. Uh, but uh, super partnership and the single member LC, they filed the Schedule C. They filed the Schedule C. Uh, then the Schedule C, they need to be, uh, okay, they need to pay, be, uh, pay the self-employed tax on it. But the S corporation, um, similar, they, they both they have uh, $450,000 income. So, but super partnership is single member LC, the $450,000 together all need to pay self-employed tax uh, if they uh, haven't exceeded the threshold yet. So that's mean you can see the self-employed tax here. Uh, so super partnership single member LC, they pay, need to pay extra 12,000, uh, kind of $13,000 here. Uh, so you you will see the uh, the the safe uh, is uh, underneath. So uh, that's uh, about uh, eighty five hundred to ten thousand uh, dollars. You know that's a saving if they use the uh, S corporation uh, instead. Okay. Uh, also, that's how we call the Obama Care uh, tax too. That's a surcharge three point eight percent net uh, investment interest uh, you know tax uh, this is also uh, it's a, it's a super partnership partnership uh, LC as corporation is a pass through entity they need to uh, pay the uh, you know NIT tax but in the corporation level that's no but in shareholder level yes okay and uh, so I already talked about the 199a section 20 percent uh, deduction uh, this can be a Mm, one hour, two hour section uh, for you guys to know the QBI. Uh, but as, I, as you know, uh, as far as uh, maybe you already take some advantage because when you receive a K1, uh, when you file the return, your tax uh, advisor already take, um, you know, give you a 20% deduction on that. That's uh, that's a real help. Yeah, because only C corporation, they drop the tax rate from 35% to a 21%. But, uh, uh, individuals highest tax return uh the individual high tax rate is only dropped from 39.6 percent to 37 percent and uh, based on the former president's uh tax law passed uh that's would be you know back uh in the 2025 uh so uh, the indi individual tax return will be back to highest point but corporation c corporation will be a permanent change but we'll see uh i know the current administration, they try to do some uh, uh, changes for the tax law, but uh, this is the current one. Uh, things can be changed uh, even maybe by the year. End. So uh, even next year, all the rate I talk about may be different. Okay, like uh, for double taxation issues, uh, this example only uh, focus on the federal level. They didn't uh, mention about the state level. So corporation level is 21% uh, for state corporation. Uh, and uh, for the S corporation, the 37%. Uh, then after the tax, so, so the individuals have the uh, after tax income, six, $630,000. But C corporation, uh, this also didn't consider the no section 199A deduction available for S corporation. So for the C corporation, okay, so they get a 21%. That's seven ninety thousand uh, dollars, you know, income, return earning. So they keep the industry corporation. If they didn't, if they do not have the dividend, they do not need to pay the twenty three point eight percent dividend tax in the shareholder level. But when, when the corporation distribute the dividend at the current tax rate, so twenty percent plus three point eight percent, so that's the how much tax the individual level needed to pay in the, in the, for the federal part, okay? So then in this part, so that's $28,000 tax saving. But the uh, situation can be changed if they added 199A, uh, or they can be tax deferred dividend, uh, a tax, you know, dividend, you know, as a deferral. And also the tax rate will be changed maybe next year, you never know. So that's the, just some uh, general, uh, example, you know, for your uh, information only. And another thing, it's uh, we also it's another tax planning 
consideration is that C corporation can be kind of year or physical year, but the most other entities must be kind of year. Okay, what make this, uh, you know, uh, like a more attractive for the C corporation? That means when you sell a corporation, like uh, on the December, so you can choose, okay, you, you can choose, okay, uh, maybe January 31st, 2021 as the physical event, or you can choose even November 30, 2021 as your physical event. Okay, that's mean your deduction. Okay, your deduction, like for compensation in this period, in the 2020, in the 2020 return. But uh, if the composition you paid in the January 2021, that's on your 2021 tax return, not on your 2020s uh, individual tax return. So give you another year to uh, make a adjustment or make a you know, reasonable uh, legally deduction or tax planning on that part. So this is also a beautiful consideration, but you cannot abuse it. Uh, you need to be, you cannot manipulate, you know, the timing, okay? Uh, but that do can really uh, be a consideration. Another new consideration is the PTE tax. It's just uh, recently signed into law uh, last year. Uh, I mean, because the time limit, I, I, want, I don't want to uh, uh, involve, uh, talk about this too much, but uh, June 15 is another deadline. Uh, for all the, maybe your CPA tax provider will give you a call before that to see if uh, your business is uh, beneficial or better off to do the uh, PTE withholding tax. Uh, so, you know, that's try to be, a, uh, maybe avoid the sort uh, limitation for $10,000 in the federal level. So this is a really a good move uh, for the uh, state level uh, to try to be, uh, you know, try to be the California, those wealthy people, they already pay a lot of state tax. They can take advantage in the federal level. So I don't want to uh, talk this uh, uh, too much, you know, based on my uh, time frame. Yeah. Okay. So that's all for my today's uh, presentation. Um, so you guys have any, any questions, both, uh, no matter in English or Chinese, so I can uh, happy to uh, uh, to answer or in this section or maybe afterward. Thank you, Eric. That was a, that was a very informative uh, presentation. presentation. A lot of data there, and uh, certainly your website, as you were paging through there, uh, does have a lot of those tables. So for our viewers and those in the room, if you didn't catch all that, you can go to Eric's website to see some of that data uh, whenever you're getting into that. The first question that we have is, Eric, you referenced a number of times working with your attorney or consulting your attorney. Can you kind of explain how does that work? Do we get you as our CPA and the attorney and us all in the same room or virtual, or do we send emails or kind of what does that look like in real life? for like those, of, those us of us that maybe haven't maybe done haven't that done before. Okay. Um, okay, Christian. Yeah, that's a uh, very good question. Um, okay. Um, so my firm, so we have an office uh, in, uh, uh, you know, I like uh, six office in the U.S. I have uh, six office in the back in the Asia. So uh, also we have a, a kind of a family office type of uh, uh, practice, help the client, uh, do some uh, estate tax planning, asset protection planning, uh, also involve those uh, tax planning. Uh, usually when you talk about uh, uh, tax like uh, uh, planning related to the estate and the asset protection. So we also talk about the insurance trust and the party foundation. Uh, so we work very closely uh, with uh, uh, tax attorneys uh, so we, uh, our firm can be personally have client to uh, sell like a private foundation. We are really an uh, expert in the, uh, the private foundation sector in the Bay Area. Um, uh, but uh, also because we have an office in the Asia, like uh, Beijing, Shanghai, Qingdao, Chengdu, uh, Shenzhen, Taipei. So we uh, cover like a course uh, street, uh, the Chinese Asian uh, community. So they have uh, a business uh, like a uh, uh, Dan, 
uh, mention about the 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 Ding Ding TV is uh, like a cross bridge connect east to the west. So we are considered like a uh, maybe family doctor or uh, for all those uh, clients. So when you have come to all those uh, uh, tax financial related uh, questions, you come to uh, our uh, firm uh, first. So if you have some uh, a particular uh, area we, we do not cover, we do not serve. So we may be forward to um, the client, to the expertise in that uh, area. So usually it's kind of like a regional type of uh, family office type. Thank you for Thank that. You for, for our that. staff, are there any other questions, questions online, online that you can read for us? We don't have any question question online. online. Okay, so okay, we do so have we one have more question for you. Your last, last question, question, Eric, is, is uh, again, you did, again, show, you did us, show us uh, your, website your website and your website contact, contact information. information. Can we assume, can we assume that you're that accepting new clients and if any of our viewers today would like your help, they could get in touch with you? Yes, sure, Christian. Yeah, we do have, like in Bay Area, we do have an office in Mia Peters. I think uh, uh, my partner, Sir uh, Kony Zhang, uh, this morning also presented uh, in this event uh, on the site in the Ding Ding TV as headquarters. Uh, by the way, also here I try to be say uh, thank you and appreciate for the organizers, uh, for the Chaozhou uh, Foundation, um, and also for uh, Papa and the Ding Ding TV, and also you know Dan and the Christian. Thank you for you guys wonderful uh, hosts, you know, organized for this kind of event. So you always can come to us uh, for, uh, you know, for the like a tax or financial accounting, and auditing and the consulting services. Yeah. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate.